And of course, errors, uh, which you spot on these slides, are mine. And I uh, usually have a rule that uh, for everyone who is uh, pointed out a typo, I'm happy to send a postcard from uh, one of the places uh, I'm visiting. And I tend to do a lot of travel. So in case you uh, like to get a postcard from some random place in the world, uh, just uh, try to pay attention. Um, OK. So um, today, um, I'm going to talk about computation of dimension, more precisely about computation of the host of dimension. Um, and uh, provided this slice work, um, Okay, so it doesn't. Um, okay, so something is not working. But if it is meaningful, that's better. Yes. Can you try now? Okay, yeah. great. Okay. <laughs> and uh, there will be two parts. So today I'm going to talk about computation uh, of uh, house of dimension of a set. And uh, the day after tomorrow, I'm going to talk about uh, computations of the house of dimension of emersia. Um, so let's start uh, with the types of sets uh, we are particularly interested in. Uh, and why do we want to do it at all? Uh, so this was inspired and suggested uh, by some results from number theory, uh, which concerned uh, continued fractions. Uh, the continued fraction is uh, um, an expression uh, like that, uh, which uh, could be familiar probably. And uh, what uh, and in turn we can um, so every rational number, rational number can be written as a finite or infinite continued fraction. And uh, this uh, setting also allows us uh, to uh, define subsets of real numbers in terms of their continued fractions. So in particular, for example, you can consider all sets of real numbers whose continued fraction has only digits from one to n. Uh, well, you don't need to be that restrictive. You don't need to have all digits in order. You can also be interested in a set of uh, continued fraction of rational numbers whose continued fractions has uh, some random selection of D digits. Um, um, but more interesting, uh, maybe as I said, uh, uh, sets of numbers where continued, where not all sequences. Uh, in continued fraction expressions are allowed. So what does it mean? It means that uh, we choose uh, our digits, and then we add uh, extra condition uh, saying that uh, two digits, for example, cannot follow one after another. Um, and uh, finally, uh, the, your uh, selection criteria doesn't have to be finite. You can uh, consider it to be infinite. So, for example, we can choose to consider uh, all numbers whose uh, continued uh, digits and continued fraction is equal to uh, some number modular, uh, modular, uh, modular n. Um, so, these are the types of sets, or one of the particular way to uh, define subsets of real numbers. Uh, which turn out to play uh, an important role in number theory, uh, which we're about to see. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I believe uh, this is a conjecture, uh, this is the Rimbo conjecture due to uh, from 1972. And if I'm not mistaken, the Rimbo was actually Polish. Also, I don't really know the history that well. Um, <clears throat> And this is a rainbow from Krakow. That was such famous one. Yes, the rainbow from Krakow. Um, and uh, maybe it was, maybe this one was black relatives. Um, so, and he suggested uh, that um, uh, for any uh, rational number, uh, for an international number, uh, there is uh, there exists uh, such a number Q, P, uh, which is co prime with Q, uh, such that uh, all, all uh, continued fractions 
uh, such as the ratio can be written as a uh, periodic continued fraction uh, with uh, digits from only one, two, uh, three, four, and five. So basically it says that uh, to represent the ratio numbers correspond to the periodic to finite continued fractions. And um, this, this uh, conjecture says that in fact, you don't need all, uh, uh, all digits, uh, that digits one, two, uh, three, four, and five are actually sufficient. Uh, and this conjecture still remains open, uh, but uh, to, uh, <clears throat> so while uh, trying to attack uh, the major problem, uh, there were, my, uh, the, the, of course, uh, many simplifications, and one of them was particularly successful. So they suggested that uh, instead of trying to prove it uh, for uh, all uh, numbers, uh, you can try to prove it for almost all. And this type of result is called uh, density one result. So it, it says that uh, the proportion uh, of the numbers uh, between uh, one and two, uh, so that the continued fraction can be written, uh, the, the continued fraction has only digits from one to five, is uh, actually tends to one as uh, Q tends to infinity. Um, so, and this uh, density one result uh, actually does hold true. It was first proved by Bourgain and Alex, John Bourgain and Alex Kantorovich. This is the same Alex Kantorovich uh, who's, uh, I was mentioned, was mentioned in connection with Apollonian circle packing. And uh, Huang was a student of Alex Kantorovich. Unfortunately, uh, his, uh, his move proved slightly stronger result. Uh, based on the previous work, but uh, unfortunately he left mathematics and uh, went to work in a bank. Um, <laughs> but uh, the results they establish, actually uh, it is conditional uh, on the fact that uh, this, uh, the whole sort of dimension of the set of rational numbers that you can obtain is bigger than uh, five or six. Uh, so, in other words, they require in the argument, uh, and uh, this is not removable, that, um, uh, the <coughs> uh, that the counter set which you obtain uh, is fat enough so that uh, the house of dimension is sufficiently large. And uh, uh, since that work, there was uh, uh, a sequence of other papers uh, where, where similar results, for example, with digits one, two, uh, or, or three, and four uh, were also proved uh, subjects to the uh, similar restrictions. So what is the alpha? What? What is the alpha? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, alpha. The alpha is the number that can be represented. The, the alpha is with just those conditions. Right. Uh, uh, well, back then it was not known. Or oh, when when they proved it, it was not known. Um, okay. Um, so uh, another application which one might be interested in is related to the spectral theory of uh, hyperbolic surfaces. Uh, so uh, this is, let's just uh, change the topic, uh, start slowly again. Uh, so one can consider a disk uh, on the unit, on the complex plane uh, with the hyperbolic metric. And uh, one can consider a group generated by reflections in three different geodesics uh, acting, uh, 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 acting on the hyperbolic plane. So uh, let us stay here for a moment. So uh, the circle, the big round circle is of course the uni disk. Uh, then you have uh, three uh, arcs which are orthogonal to the unit circle and these are three uh, geodesics. And our group is generated by the reflections. This is uh, maps R1, R2, and R3, uh, which are uh, ref uh, reflections on this uh, hyperbolic plane as a unit disk. 
And uh, we assume we make the extra assumption that all these uh, geodesics they are uh, equidistant. Uh, and or uh, this can be written in this model is that the angle which between uh, the segments which connect the center to the boundary points are actually all theta. And uh, this uh, setting uniquely define a hyperbolic group acting on a plane. And uh, one can consider um, the limit set of this group. It is going to be uh, the, the set of accumulation points uh, of uh, the orbit, for example, of zero. It doesn't matter which, orbit, which point you pick up. So what we want, uh, we take the origin in this disk. Uh, we consider uh, its images under all elements, which means that we keep reflecting it in uh, these boundary geodesics. And uh, these images occasionally they are going to uh, accumulate and they don't at the boundary and the set of uh, uh, accumulation points of these images of the uh, single point inside the disk is called the limit set and at least uh, on the boundary on this uni disk. Um, so it turned out it's so known that um, <coughs> uh, the first eigen that um, if you consider factor space between of uh, hyperbolic plane by the group action, uh, then you get a hyperbolic surface. And on this surface, one can consider an, a Laplacian operator. This is the usual Laplacian operator that we know and love. And it has uh, uh, the smallest uh, real eigenvalue, uh, which connected to the house of dimension using this formula. Uh, so uh, of the limit set. So in particular, if we can somehow find a way uh, to compute the house of dimension of the limit set, uh, then we also obtain a bound on uh, the uh, uh, smallest eigenvalue of the Laplacian operator. Um, this uh, might be of uh, a completely different application, uh, but uh, uh, the methods that we are going to discuss uh, still applies. So what is theta? But theta is the angle. Theta, theta is the angle in so the center. Yes, it is parameter here, the problem. Uh, yes. So that is the theta for which uh, there is transition uh, when uh, lambda theta becomes, lambda zero becomes uh, one quarter, vice versa. Uh, so it yeah. comes from for lambda zero, it's minimum of two things. Yes. Uh, is it known that there is a uh, theta for which uh, but water is realized in this field? I believe so, yes. Okay. Um, so let me just think of what before, before I said something. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, let me just, it will be in the limit as theta tends to zero. Uh, it's, theta, it's theta tends to pi over three, sorry. <laughs> Yes, uh, let me just not say anything silly. Um, okay. Uh, okay, uh, now, um, okay. so um, uh, let me uh, start uh, slow again, uh, back to the objects of the study. If uh, you already know that uh, what house of dimension is, you maybe can uh, sleep for, uh, for maybe for 10 minutes, uh, but I decided that uh, maybe if, some, not, if there's somebody who doesn't know what it is, uh, we'll just cover this uh, briefly. Uh, so if you have uh, uh, some subset of the real line and, the, uh, and uh, what you want is uh, to uh, consider that <coughs> to find out uh, how big it is. Uh, and uh, one of the ways to describe it is uh, dimension, in particular Hausdorff dimension. So there are approximately uh, 25 different notions of dimension. Uh, last time I checked on Wikipedia, uh, but uh, today we are dealing only with one of them. Uh, so, for example, if you have a set which is just a single point, the dimension is going to be zero. Uh, and if it is an interval, the dimension is going to be one. 
And uh, so, so, so uh, what we will be particularly useful to us is that uh, if um, <clears throat> you have uh, so one set is a subset of another, then dimensions is inequality between the dimensions of course holds. And uh, if uh, you want to uh, see more formal definition of that, you're not satisfied with uh, this hand wavian. Uh, so what you, we try, uh, we can formally define it by picking, for example, some number, small number delta, and you can consider a curve of your set uh, by the intervals of the length delta. And uh, then uh, we can define a new quantity, uh, which is going to be uh, the sum or the infimum of along the all covers of the sum of uh, the lengths of your intervals raised to the power t. It is a function uh, which depends on uh, the set and uh, the, the real valid function. And it turns out that uh, this set, this function has simply two values. It is either infinity or zero. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, in particular, uh, the host of dimension is just a point, is an infimum of all values, uh, where uh, the, the, this uh, function is equals to zero. Uh, so there is a typo in the bottom. It should be uh, all uh, curvy h all the way through. Uh, so this is the definition, formal definition of a host of dimension. And uh, it's uh, very uh, good if uh, your set is nice and easy. Uh, you can compute your Hausdorff dimension straightforward uh, from the definition. So, for example, um, <clears throat> if your set is just a middle short concert set, uh, uh, no doubt many familiar is, uh, then it can be equally uh, covered, which is can be considered as uh, Expansion uh, model three uh, with uh, missing digit uh, one, uh, then uh, you can uh, compute it to be uh, the ratio of logarithm two and logarithm three. And this is actually uh, exact number. You can know it exactly as you want. Uh, and uh, you can deduce it almost instantaneously from definition just by taking a cover of by two to the k intervals of the length one of us. Uh, three, or one over three to the power k, and uh, looking at uh, the expressions that you want to compute, uh, you will see that yes, indeed, if it is uh, uh, that if it is smaller than log two over log three, then you get uh, convergence to zero, and if it is bigger than uh, log two over three, uh, if it's smaller than log two over three, then you get uh, convergence to infinity. So the dimension is indeed, it should be log two over log three. Uh, but uh, so this set is uh, particularly straightforward, but uh, all the sets that we actually interested in are not so easy to deal with. And uh, most of the sets don't have closed expression for the house of dimension. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is uh, something more closer to our problem. Uh, this is, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the set which is related to uh, to uh, so the to continued fractions, and uh, what uh, do we do here? So uh, we fix uh, for we choose four four digits for simplicity, and we may consider a map. Um, four maps uh, as, uh, corresponding to each of these digits each. So these uh, maps are uh, just inverse branches of the Gauss map. And uh, we actually uh, had a Markov condition so that we also uh, uh, here's the matrix of the size uh, four by four of zero and ones, uh, which actually has us a Markov condition for our iterated function scheme. And uh, what does it tell us? Uh, it tells us um, <coughs> that um, if you have um, so the, <laughs> this uh, limit set for this iterated function scheme and our Markov matrix, uh, actually is going to be the set of all numbers uh, whose continued fraction expressions has digits one, have digits one, two, uh, three, and four. 
uh, with the next conditions that uh, combinations of 1, 4, 2, 4, 4, 1, and 4, 2 are not allowed. Uh, so uh, let us uh, just stay a little bit uh, at it for a moment. Uh, so uh, probably may remember that uh, counterset that we have seen before, linear counterset, uh, was gener it can be generated by iterated function scheme of two linear contractions. Uh, here we have uh, six, uh, four uh, nonlinear contractions. So these are the maps uh, T1, T2, T3, and T4. Uh, they all uh, map our unit interval into a subset of uh, the unit interval, uh, so which is uh, shown on uh, a vertical axis. Uh, we actually have been there. Yeah, maybe. So, uh, and uh, this um, extra condition uh, is, is encoded here in this Markov matrix. Uh, uh, is as uh, a requirement that uh, the map, for example, T1 uh, can the map cannot follow after map T4, uh, which because this will uh, result in a sequence of one four in the continued in the continued fraction representation of the corresponding uh, limit point. Um, so uh, maybe if this not clear at the moment, uh, it will be probably I will go through over it again a bit later. Uh, so this uh, and uh, of course the question is uh, would it be so easy uh, to compute a house of dimension of uh, this set now? Uh, yes. Does this example have uh, some particular significance or just randomly? Um, matrix M. It's not exactly randomly chosen, uh, but uh, significance of this uh, will probably appear in about an hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, one of the approaches to compute uh, uh, first of the dimension uh, of uh, the limit set uh, was due to Oliver Jenkinson and Mark Polycott in uh, 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 from 2002 uh, paper. And uh, the approach was that uh, <laughs> uh, called uh, thermodynamic formalism and uh, suggests that uh, to it, iterated function scheme, we associate an analytic function. It is called pressure function. Uh, probably we have seen it uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, oh no, uh, during the first series of mini courses. And uh, the significance of this uh, analytic function is that its uh, largest uh, zero is the uh, house of dimension. Um, and uh, then, uh, they also introduced an operator, uh, which is called transfer operator, uh, and uh, the reg associated, it is also associated with a dynamical system, and the significance of this operator is that uh, exponential of the pressure function is uh, the simple uh, maximal eigenvalue. And uh, uh, finally, uh, they introduced a bioanalytic function, which is called the determinant, and it is defined as the determinant of the difference between the identity operator and as uh, a transfer operator uh, multiplied by uh, extra dummy variable Z. Uh, so then the role of the dummy variable is that uh, it just plays a role in uh, a proof that estimates are exact. And uh, finally, uh, because it is a bioanalytic function, uh, the, it has a power series expansion, uh, which uh, where the coefficients uh, depend on our variable t, and uh, the dummy variable appears as a uh, power series variable. Uh, finally, uh, they compute uh, the integer, the largest zero of uh, this uh, uh, function when z is equal to one. 
Uh, why is it called uh, periodic point method? Uh, because uh, these uh, coefficients which arise here, uh, they can be written in terms of the periodic points of the iterated function scale. In particular, uh, coefficient number n involves uh, all uh, periodic points up to period n. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, this is uh, briefly uh, the idea. Uh, and EMP and PTN are the same. Uh, sorry, PT is a pressure function. Yeah, you have PTN also. Oh, PTN is uh, uh, the pressure function computed. Uh, use, oh, PTM, it is, yes, it is the same. It is just uh, to, to, to add significance of the matrix, of uh, the Markov matrix. So, of course, it will depend on uh, the, everything here depends on the system. And uh, in particular, the pressure function, it depends on the uh, matrix, uh, which uh, then depends on somehow disappeared. <sighs> Okay. Um, now, um, uh, what is good here, uh, good news here is that uh, the coefficients that we need to sum up, uh, they converge to zero super exponentially, uh, which makes actually the estimates possible. Uh, the bad part here is that they, there is no reason why they should converge super exponentially to zero starting from the first one or from the second. And the implied constant can be really very large. So uh, there is a lot of uh, work. So uh, for, if the, for many interesting cases, the coefficients start to converge to zero from, uh, from like m equals to 16, and this is not the limit. So for example, uh, it would be the case for the system I have showed you of uh, the Gauss counter map just a few moments ago. Um, and <clears throat> the number of periodic points, of course, grows super exponentially uh, with uh, uh, n, with, no, with the number of iterate, with period. And the uh, base of this exponential is the number of maps. So, for example, for the system we have just discussed, uh, <coughs> actually grow of as uh, uh, four to the power n, uh, you may think, but uh, actually the system we will to accommodate the Markov, Markov condition. We will need to consider a more complicated system. So, uh, but it will be growing at least as uh, four to the power n. Uh, and um, if you like uh, now to do some rough estimates uh, of uh, the resources you will need, uh, this means that. If you want to uh, store periodic points, it will take at least 10 gigabytes of uh, memory. Uh, so you may think that 10 gigabytes probably is not uh, that big, uh, but first exponential growth is cruel. And second, you will need to access uh, this uh, data reasonably quickly. Uh, and write it down and keep it down somewhere. And uh, uh, finally, uh, yeah, this estimates uh, the conversions is not in reality not very good. Um, <laughs> so, which period, period of this 10 gigabytes? Uh, well, it depends on how many uh, of how many. Uh, so, here is uh, if we have four maps and you take uh, points of the of after period 16, it would require approximately 10 gigabytes of uh, memory, but it depends, of course, uh, on the system. So we just uh, starting from our examples that we had in the first place. And uh, well, OK, so you have to do all this work uh, for a single number, which is more depressing is that uh, you will also need to prove that your estimates is, are accurate. And uh, it turns out that uh, for every system which comes around, you will have to do it over and over again. So uh, that you will need to find a way uh, to obtain uh, these constants, uh, which uh, show which in this power in the estimates of uh, AN and to balance the tail. Uh, and for 
uh, and which requires a lot of functional analysis. And for every system which comes around, uh, you will have to do it again. Uh, so uh, I have been doing uh, this uh, for about uh, six years, maybe even longer. And uh, then uh, it always uh, felt very, very wrong. So uh, when uh, COVID uh, came around, I was sufficiently uh, unhappy. So uh, I didn't want to be even more unhappy. So I thought we need some new method. Uh, to uh, solve uh, to solve all these issues um, and uh, do something more efficiently and faster. Especially, uh, I didn't have any access to a big computer. I had to, I was restricted to my uh, small laptop at home, and uh, uh, it would be very unhappy if I started to do something like this. Um. So uh, my goal was uh, to find a method uh, to compute the house of dimension, uh, at least uh, of uh, the uh, Gauss control sets. Uh, and uh, I think I succeeded. And uh, I'm going to explain it in uh, the simplest possible setting, uh, which is the Gauss counter set, which has digits one, uh, two, n. Uh, but then uh, uh, we will be able to adapt it, and uh, we will see how can one adapt, adapt it to much more complicated settings. And uh, so this uh, I'm still uh, building up. Uh, all uh, code uh, which does this computation, which I'm going to talk about, I actually I wrote myself. It is uh, written in uh, Fortran and in C. It is available on my GitHub. If uh, uh, there is somebody uh, who may be interested in uh, this sort of area, I'm uh, very uh, uh, happy for collaboration. Um, okay, uh, so. What we um, start with, uh, well, we start as uh, uh, great uh, uh, people started. Uh, we start in the same way. Uh, so uh, we have a set, we have our Gauss counter set, and uh, we have our continue of our dynamical system, uh, which probably, uh, which we have seen already. So uh, that, um, uh, uh, our set is the element set of uh, this uh, uh, system. And uh, here, uh, it's um, uh, what does it mean to be the limit set? Well, it means that we plug a point and we take any tra uh, trajectory and uh, we end up in our set. Um, and it doesn't matter uh, which set uh, we take. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, since our uh, set is a set of continuous fractions, uh, the, it, the maps are already given to us uh, by God. So uh, these are infinite sequence, these are numbers which uh, can be written as an infinite sequence of as a, as a, uh, continuous fractions with uh, partial quotients chosen from the set from one to n, uh, which means that uh, we can just uh, uh, take uh, inverse branches of the Gauss map. And uh, they will give the limit set of this iterated functional system uh, will be exactly uh, what we want. Uh, okay, so we are in business, uh, nice and easy. Uh, now, uh, uh, what we want, uh, we want a transfer operator uh, as uh, building on, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh, the transfer operator is going to act uh, on a space of analytic functions for us uh, on the unit interval. And uh, here it is, uh, it is Banach space of uh, uh, continuous functions. Uh, you can take it, or continuous functions. You can even take analytic functions. And it is acting in a most natural way. Uh, so uh, here, for example, uh, you just take uh, absolute value of the derivative, uh, to take it to the power t, and you take composition uh, with the iterated function scheme we know. Okay. Um, and then, uh, this is, again, a standard construction uh, of the iterated function, of the transfer operator for the iterated function scheme. 
Uh, very well. Uh, uh, now, uh, what else we need? Uh, we need uh, the <clears throat> I wanted uh, uh, so we can note now the spectral radius of the transfer operator uh, by rho of theta, and we already know that the spectral radius uh, is uh, going to be um, the uh, and the spectral radius is connected to the dimension in the sense that if the spectral radius is equal to one then the corresponding parameter is the house of dimension. Uh, so where, uh, do, what does it mean for us? Uh, it means for us uh, that uh, in order to uh, compute the house of dimension, or if we want to compute the house of dimension, uh, or we can actually start looking for uh, the computation of the spectral radius of the transfer operator. Mm -hmm. So uh, in uh, their work, um, uh, they computed uh, uh, the, this again corresponds to uh, what we have seen before. Uh, and in fact, you can see that if this operator has spectral radius one, it means that uh, the house of dimension uh, is exactly uh, the largest zero of this function. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, we are trying to quantify it. And yeah. like, actually, the question is how far you can move. From time to time, I read something because states the theorem. Mention analytical and depends on the parameter. Okay, but this is the general theorem, but your goal is much better. Uh, well, yeah, but actually, I would be very interested to know, like, uh, on uh, in, in many specific settings, it's not very easy how large is a parameter interval where it is analytic. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in general, we have the real analytic function, but it is minus p log f prime, and it, this is harmonic. Harmonic extends to complex radius. It's written in some papers by Rubinsky, in my book. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, Okay, uh, so instead of uh, looking for the spectral radius, uh, we are going to look uh, for uh, the eigenvector. So luckily for us in uh, the setting we consider spectral radius is an isolated maximal eigenvalue. Uh, so uh, it is sufficient, it would be sufficient uh, to find uh, maximal uh, the eigenfunction which corresponds to this uh, maximal eigenweight. Um, okay, uh, so yeah. and uh, here is a very simple lemma which uh, actually uh, here a lot of hidden, uh, but. Uh, for the particular case of the dynamical system we consider, it holds true uh, that if you have two functions uh, and one of them is increasing under the action of the operator and another one is decreasing under the action of the operator, uh, then uh, the spectral reason, uh, 
the spectral radius is actually uh, equal to one is going to be uh, somewhere in between. So we pick uh, two parameter radius, uh, T1 and T2, and if for one, we actually manage to find a function uh, which is uh, gets smaller under the under appliance apparatus, so the ratio is smaller than one, and we take another value, a T2, and it got bigger, so that uh, the ratio is bigger than one, uh, then the house of dimension is going to be uh, somewhere in between uh, these two values. And uh, this, of course, depends on the continuity of pressure, for example, in particular, and about uh, monotonicity of pressure, uh, in particular near uh, the value of the dimension. Uh, but uh, this, uh, around this idea, uh, provided you actually have uh, monotonicity of pressure and, uh, and reticity of pressure, uh, it actually allows us uh, to compute uh, the house of dimension of uh, the set we are interested in. Um, Have you defined the pressure? Uh, no, I didn't define the pre I didn't define the pressure. I defined only spectral. I defined only spectral radius. I said if you uh, know what the pressure is, and you will be bored to death. And if you don't know what the pressure is, you probably uh, will not learn it from uh, this talk. Um, um, okay. Uh, so, uh, for us, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, um, okay, so maybe I have to accelerate a little bit. Uh, uh, yes, okay, that's fine. Let's just take a short break and then I'll try to find out. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so uh, coming back uh, to uh, the where we finished, um, to make everything work. Uh, what we need, we want to construct uh, two functions, uh, which one of them uh, for, 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 for two parameter values, for two different parameter values, uh, one of them is getting smaller under the action of the operator, and another one is getting bigger under the action of the operator. Um, so, and if you like it in pictures, uh, then uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, what I just said. So uh, we have uh, one function which is increasing and another function which is uh, got a little bit bigger and uh, it gives us uh, the dimension enclosed uh, somewhere in between uh, these two parameter values. Um, okay. Uh, and uh, now uh, we want to approach um, uh, the method of the construction of these uh, test functions. Uh, we are going to use an advantage that we are in an analytic space. Uh, so that our eigenfunction is analytic and therefore uh, the test functions uh, can be uh, chosen just to be polynomials. And uh, this is uh, very powerful because uh, polynomials actually uh, dense in the space of analytic functions, and uh, this is a space with uh, countable basis. Um, uh, and uh, we approach uh, the construction of uh, two analytic functions, approximating functions, uh, via interpolation theory. Uh, so what does it mean? Uh, it means the following is that um, we built uh, our functions uh, as uh, uh, approximation to the test function uh, using the basis of Chebyshev polynomials. Uh, so for this, uh, you can just pick any number, for example, number M, and uh, take a system of Lagrange polynomials, uh, this 
are associated to the system of Chebyshev nodes. Uh, so uh, Chebyshev nodes are specifically chosen points in the interval, uh, and uh, they were introduced uh, by uh, uh, Pafnuti Chebyshev, uh, to uh, who uh, was whose problem was uh, to find uh, the best possible approximation uh, to an analytic function, or uh, rather he wanted to solve the following problem that if you have an analytic function and you want to approximate it by polynomial, then uh, from its values somewhere, uh, then uh, where you need to pick up these test values. So it turned out that if you want the best possible approximation to um, an analytic function, then the best for you is to know its values at specific points, and these specific points are called Chebyshev nodes. And uh, the system of uh, Lagrange polynomials associated to the Chebyshev nodes is just a system of polynomials uh, with the property that each of them is equal to one and its own node and equals to zero everywhere else. And uh, from this data, uh, we built an approximation to our transfer operator uh, on uh, the system of the polynomials. Sorry, on, 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 on the subspace of spanned by polynomials of degree M. And uh, this is a finite dimensional subspace. So approximation is going to be just a matrix uh, of the size M times M. And uh, we can compute the eigenvector of this matrix and we can build our function as a linear combination of the uh, elements of the eigenvector with our Lagrange polynomials. So this is standard approach uh, of interpolation theory uh, to construct uh, eigenfunctions of linear operators. Uh, I learned about it uh, from uh, one of the papers by Babenko, who worked uh, on a problem of uh, Gauss, uh, which was the computation of the second eigenvalue of the transfer operator associated to the uh, to the Gaussian map. So somewhere fifty some fifty years ago, uh, there was an open question about uh, computing uh, eigenvalues of the transfer operator associated to the full Gaussian system, to the system which includes uh, all. Uh, branches of the Gaussian map. Uh, it was uh, solved independently by uh, Meyer uh, in, uh, and uh, Babenko. Uh, uh, Babenko was in the uh, Soviet Union. Meyer was, I believe, in Germany at the time. And uh, uh, one of the approaches uh, by Babenko uh, was uh, to use uh, this uh, interpolation method of constructing a an, or an approximation to the eigenvector of the transfer operator. So in our case, uh, we need just maximum eigenvalue. We don't need uh, infinitely many, um, we don't have infinitely many maps. Uh, so everything, and our computers are much bigger than his, uh, uh, sorry, they're actually smaller than his, but much more powerful. Uh, so we are very lucky. <clears throat> and uh, after that, uh, we can happily verify the conditions that we need to verify and uh, uh, compute uh, the Hausdorff dimension and obtain, uh, obtain the estimates uh, on the Hausdorff dimension we are after. So uh, here I'd like to point out that um, we did not actually require at first place uh, the functions we construct to be close to anything. Uh, they didn't need to approximate test function, we don't care. It just turns out, and it is very natural, that the better the function you construct approximate the test function, the eigenfunction, the better approximation you get. Um, but uh, we don't need to get any quantitative estimates on this. Uh, in fact, uh, eigenvalue eigen eigen of the matrix that we have just seen on the previous slide is going to be approximation to the eigenvalue uh, of the operator. And when you do the computations, you see that the better uh, 
approximate the closer eigenvalue of this uh, matrix, uh, which was on the previous slide. The closer eigenvalue of uh, this matrix is to one, uh, the closer approximation to the eigenfunction you obtain from this equation, and dependence is actually linear. Uh, however, uh, we don't need to do any theoretical work ourselves. Everything that we need to do is basically here flowed to the computer uh, by checking uh, these uh, two inequalities and by checking that uh, functions that we construct uh, actually uh, don't vanish. Yes. What's the functions G? Uh, you mentioned F, which comes to the. Uh, you have two functions one is F, another is G. One of corresponding to uh, uh, one uh, one of uh, corresponding to one value, another one is corresponding to the other value. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, but, but no, yes. Okay. Yeah. So your method you use zeta to use zeta to go back to just the operator. Yeah, I go back just to the operator. And. Uh, also, uh, yes. Uh, but uh, it actually theorem taken that uh, when you take m larger and larger, the approximation becomes better at a certain speed. Uh, yes. What is the speed uh, depending on m? I think it is. Um, it depends on the problem. Uh, so uh, for this question, uh, for, for this, uh, for, for this, for the setting of Gauss counter of Gauss counter sets, I believe it is linear. Um, okay, and uh, here you can see that if you actually get approximation to the uh, eigenfunctions, then the ratio between uh, an image of uh, the functions that you obtain and the function itself is going to be close to the constant. Uh, and therefore its derivative is going to be zero. And this allows us also to uh, obtain this estimate over here because like, they look easy, but the trick here is that you need to justify these two inequalities, not on a final set of points, you need to justify them everywhere. And in some questions or in some setting for some sets, uh, these two functions that you construct, they tend to be uh, oscillating very, very quickly. And then it is almost hopeless. Uh, so, uh, but uh, this inequality uh, actually, oh, sorry, this identity, uh, if you're lucky, uh, that actually gives us some hope. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so it turns out that uh, this determinant uh, turns uh, can, can turns us to uh, zero as m turns to infinity. So the better approximation we get, uh, then uh, the closer uh, this derivative is going to be uh, to zero. And this particular allows us to uh, prove these uh, estimates rigorously using uh, ball precision arithmetic. Okay, um, so I think this is uh, um, uh, all uh, the, about the method. Uh, now I'm going to get to, to about a bit about the results uh, that we managed to obtain. Uh, so uh, first, then we wanted to showcase uh, how good we get. Uh, we computed uh, about 200 digits of uh, the house of dimension of the set E2. Uh, why is that? Uh, well, exactly just uh, to show off. Uh, so if you try to compute it using uh, the periodic point method, it will take you approximately 10 to the 40 days. And when I said to myself, 10 to the 40 days is not particularly a large number because I can write uh, one with uh, 40 zeros on this blackboard. It will not take very long. Uh, but then I write on Wikipedia that it is more than the age of the universe. Uh, so uh, it will be a bit too long to wait. Um, and, but uh, our computer can do it in about 24 hours, which is uh, much better. Um, and also, uh, 
proved, uh, of course, a lot of estimates on the stats of these types um, uh, in a paper uh, that we have uh, in, a, in a transactions of mathematics. We have uh, there is a table of uh, the sets uh, we were able to find in the literature that people were uh, remotely interested in, and we estimated the dimension of uh, many of them. And uh, for example, in, in particular, you can just uh, confirm the estimate that was needed for the Zaremba conjecture that we've seen in before. And I actually get a bit more than that. Uh, without extra effort, so this uh, estimate takes approximately uh, three minutes on uh, this laptop. And uh, also, this method actually extends to uh, the counter sets, uh, which in, of uh, uh, it, an unbounded set of denominators. So uh, this uh, was the estimates from a paper of Lubanski, which just appeared at that time. It was from 2020. Uh, and uh, we proved uh, rigorously uh, without uh, much effort, we were able to deal with all the effects. And uh, this uh, rigorous bounds. Uh, that we get. Uh, and again, we could probably get, print more digits if we needed, but we decided not to. Oh, yes. But here you have already infinitely many. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So then uh, uh, there is some uh, uh, summation formula which actually uh, saves us, that allows actually to evaluate uh, the operator acting on the uh, space of uh, functions explicitly. There is, this, there is a nice data function here. Okay, uh, so I started with a number theory. There's going to be a bit more of number theory. So uh, when uh, a paper appeared on the archive um, and uh, we showed it to some of our friends, uh, next day I got an email uh, from uh, Carlos Gustavo Moreira and Karol Mateusz Santos asking me if I can compute for them how the dimension of some uh, really monstrous uh, set of continued fractions, uh, which appeared in their studies of uh, Markov and Lagrange spectra. Uh, I started it and I thought it is impossible. Uh, then I started it for another hour and I got some ideas and uh, actually it turned out uh, to be possible, and I uh, believe we advanced on the study of these two famous uh, sets from the number theory quite a lot, and uh, this probably was now the main uh, driving force uh, for continuing this uh, uh, work in the past year. Um, okay, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that, and uh, like basically this will be a pushing this approach uh, to the limit in the case of uh, subsets of the real line. Um, okay, so this is uh, our continued fractions that we already know and love. And uh, so this is semester on dynamical system. So let us introduce a dynamical system. Uh, a dynamical system is going to be a Bernoulli shift on a spaces of sequences, uh, which has uh, no surprises. It just shifts the sequence by one. And um, apparently, it allows uh, us uh, to uh, play a little bit. And uh, <laughs> uh, if you have uh, a sequence uh, of, uh, uh, <clears throat> of, of natural numbers, you can kind of define a map from a sequence, a space of sequences to uh, 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 real numbers, and uh, the map is going to do this, this thing. Uh, so it is going to chop the sequence by infinite sequence into pieces, and it is uh, taking uh, our sequence into the sum of uh, the two numbers uh, whose continued fractions can be obtained from this sequence. And for historical reasons, uh, this map is called uh, lambda. Um, a result uh, by Peron from 1921 uh, tells us uh, that the Lagrange value of a sequence is actually limit supremum of the orbit of this map. 
Uh, so uh, Lagrange numbers were introduced, uh, uh, well, before that, um, well, 60 years before that, I believe, uh, but uh, this uh, very in convenient in in definition by uh, this result by Perron, we are going to use it as a definition because it just fits our setting. And a corresponding result is the definition of a Markov number. And a Markov number is just supremum of the orbit of uh, our map uh, of uh, from the sequences to real numbers. And this is uh, uh, two numbers which can be associated to any sequence. And uh, the collection of uh, Markov numbers is uh, called, called Markov spectrum. And another one is uh, called uh, the Lagrange spectrum. And uh, it is well known that the Lagrange spectrum is a subset of uh, the Markov spectrum, and both sets are closed subsets of the real. Uh, so they have been uh, studied uh, since uh, the middle of uh, 19th century, and there are a lot of uh, results about them. I'm going just to talk about a few. Um, so the first one, uh, maybe, is that um, it was due to Markov himself, where he showed that Lagrange spectrum is actually uh, the discrete set uh, between square uh, root of five and three, and uh, it consists of uh, quadratic uh, rationals, and uh, here it is. And it is actually agrees with the Markov spectrum in this interval. Um, then uh, this result, um, so he used different approach. He didn't know Perron definition because it was before that, uh, but uh, he used it, it was based on the Markov triples. Uh, Hurwitz proved that actually a square root of five is the smallest Lagrange number. And um, he used uh, another definition uh, via best approximations. It is uh, due, a constant in the Fontaine approximation which arises. Um, after that, um, Peron, uh, uh, using his definition, proves that there is no uh, Markov Lagrange numbers, uh, numbers in uh, uh, the interval between square root of 12 and square root of 13. Uh, but square root of 12 and square root of 13 are the same elements of the Lagrange spectrum. Uh, and uh, he also put this inclusion. Um, uh, then, uh, some years later, in the middle of the previous century, uh, all established that there exists a constant uh, such that uh, entire ray starting from C to infinity belongs to the both sets. And uh, uh, the, this uh, ray uh, from C to infinity got the name of whole ray. And uh, the constant is now known, known as Freeman's constant. Uh, Freeman uh, published his work in uh, 1973. It is uh, about 100 pages, lecture notes of uh, Kalinian State University. It is available only in Russian, never been translated, and uh, has never been checked. But everybody believes that Freeman constant is uh, somewhere there. Um, and here it is. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, then there were more results about this uh, remarkable set of uh, numbers. And they found that they're actually uh, the difference that this sets not actually belong to each other and agree a lot, but the difference is that's actually not empty. So that moreover, the difference contains a countable subset. And uh, somebody conjectured that maybe it is empty between square root of 12 and plus infinity. Well, uh, somebody proved that uh, two numbers, two rational numbers, uh, belong to the Lagrange spectrum, which was uh, 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 well conjectured that two rational numbers belong to Lagrange spectrum. And uh, finally, uh, more, more important to us is that uh, Google Moreira and uh, 
2018 introduced a dimension function, uh, which is dimension of uh, the Lagrange spectrum or Markov spectrum in the interval from minus infinity to t. And uh, he proved that uh, this uh, function is, of course, it is monotone and it is continuous and it is bigger than uh, zero for all um, epsilon. Uh, big, uh, sorry, it is bigger than zero or after uh, for every t bigger than three. Um, okay. Uh, <coughs> and then uh, Google uh, Pereira uh, found one number in the interval between uh, Markov and Lagrange spectrum over there. Uh, and we, from our work with uh, uh, them and Mark Polycott, uh, we found that uh, 4.5 is one of the rational points in the Lagrange spectrum. Um, okay, so um, our function introduced by Google Moreira, which is the dimension of these two wonderful sets uh, from in, on the real line is going to be uh, the subject or have become the subject of uh, our interest. Um, and uh, it turns out that it is possible to study uh, this function, the first of dimension of the Markov or the ground spectrum uh, using uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, continued fractions using the sets of continued fractions. Okay, so and moreover, it is actually possible to compute uh, this uh, uh, dimension function by computing uh, how the dimension of the set of uh, continued fractions. Uh, okay, and uh, the first result. Uh, that uh, we did uh, is uh, that the estimate on um, uh, the first transition point. So it is a monotone function. Uh, so it is monotone increasing function, and it is zero uh, for t smaller than three because then spectrum is discrete, and then it's. Uh, starting to be positive. And uh, in, uh, we managed to compute the first transition point. So this is a point where the dimension becomes one. And uh, this is uh, this uh, particular number. This is, it is accurate to all decimal places shown. And um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, now we are going to be uh, interested in house the dimension uh, in the values of this function between three and this first transition point that we have computed because afterwards it is of course one it is cannot be bigger than one and uh, before that it is zero uh, so what do we know about this function is it is uh, wild it is a counter staircase function, which means that it is uh, constant almost everywhere. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so it is zero, yes. Okay, it is zero before three. It is uh, one after three. Uh, and recently, uh, Google Marera with two quarters, they proved asymptotic, they established asymptotic of this function in year three, uh, but it is not it is quite explicit. It is written in terms of Lambert function, which is inverse of this expression. D is F there. D is uh, what is D? Uh, uh, the, oh, yes, sorry, yes, it should be F. Yes, here it, it should be F. Thank you. Oh, and um, here is the function itself. Uh, so we managed uh, to compute it. Uh, thank you to uh, the number, so to the cluster of the number theory group of, at Warwick University uh, that gave us success where all these computations were done. And um, here, uh, the way we compute it, we compute lower and upper bound at uh, a lot of points. And uh, the blue curve is uh, upper bound and the red curve is a uh, lower bound. And the reason that you don't see them is because our computations are very, so you don't see the difference because our computations are very good. Uh, so they are almost the same. 
And uh, furthermore, uh, there were quite known a long time ago uh, gaps in uh, this Bosch sets. So our estimates agree very well with the low, uh, with early results. So in particular, these four tiny intervals on the uh, real line are the gaps in the sets of Markov and Lagrange in, in the spectra, and uh, our function indeed is constant on these intervals as it should be. Um, um, uh, yes? So, do these gaps coincide with the uh, periods of uh, F being constant or? Uh, yes. Yes. There are no places where. There are already some uh, points. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, not in these intervals, but we have found, as we did these computations, uh, so uh, that there are some intervals which contain actually individual points. So uh, for these four intervals, these are true the gaps, but uh, somewhere there are isolated points. Uh, which we have found and uh, included them there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you like to compare with the asymptotic, uh, so uh, here's the same. Uh, uh, so if this, we take a zoom uh, near zero, uh, then I can compare our function with its. Uh, uh, with the Lambert function. Uh, here's the intervals again. So in uh, our paper, we found all intervals uh, of this function, which are larger than uh, 500, than 500. Um, okay. Uh, so let me uh, try to explain a little bit on how these two things uh, come together, uh, namely how the computation of uh, this uh, uh, function, dimension function, uh, comes to the computation of uh, the Hausdorff dimension of uh, the Gauss countersets. Um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, the method uh, was uh, first introduced by Bombay in 1982, and uh, he also estimated the first transition point, uh, and which we this estimate we confirm, and we get a little bit some improvement on it. Um, and we are using uh, the same uh, method, uh, but uh, with uh, our uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, what we are going to do, uh, well, one of this is the set we have seen before and we will need it again. Uh, it is a set of continuous fractions with uh, digits only one and twos. And uh, the useful fact uh, that we will need is that it is uh, the smallest uh, element of it is uh, square root of three minus one, a half of that. And the largest one is just square root of three minus one, uh, that we need the endpoints of this set. And we also will need uh, the half of dimension at some stage. Uh, but maybe, okay, no, okay. <laughs> and uh, so now let's just try a little bit of uh, exper of uh, uh, example to see a bit of examples. So uh, Markov numbers are at least uh, as big as square root of five. So we have, since both spectrum agrees, we will be dealing with the Markov numbers because they turned out to be easier uh, to study and. Um, so the first observation is that all Markov numbers are bigger than a square root of five, and uh, the square root of five corresponds to this isolated sequence, and uh, they're also smaller than uh, square root of 12, and square root of 12 uh, corresponds to the sequence of oh, one, twos, or oh, one, twos, and one, twos. Um, so what uh, actually uh, Bambi, uh, so how can we approach uh, a Napa bound um, for uh, the Hauser dimension uh, or for the value of our function at some particular point. 
So assume that uh, we pick a point between now three and uh, our transition uh, value. And what we want to do, we want to find out the half of dimension of uh, the Markov uh, spectrum uh, on, between uh, three and uh, in the interval from three to T. Um, <clears throat> uh, so what we are going to do, uh, we are going to consider um, a set of uh, finite strings uh, of one and twos uh, such that uh, after you remove uh, all, uh, so we are going to want to construct a set of finite sequences of one and twos such that after uh, removal, um, so, so that corresponds to the Markov values uh, of uh, smaller than t. Uh, so once again, uh, so we fix a number t in the interval from three to t1, which is our transition point, and we aim uh, to construct uh, all uh, we want to construct finite strings of one and two, so is that um, if uh, our number alpha doesn't, if our sequence alpha uh, doesn't contain uh, this uh, finite substring, then its Markov value is smaller than t. And uh, then this is a lemma from one of uh, papers by Marira, which says that if we exclude uh, this uh, set F, or that if, and we obtain, of course, a subset of the set A2. And uh, the claim is that uh, the intersection of the Markov spectrum uh, with uh, the interval square root of five plus T is actually belongs to this uh, direct sum of two sets. So it is two plus K. Uh, plus k, uh, which means that uh, this is uh, a simple observation, and it roughly means for us that the dimension of the Markov spectrum in the interval from three to three is actually twice than the dimension of the host of the host of dimension of our set k. Um, and uh, this uh, is the, how uh, the Counter sets, which we uh, construct uh, by forbidden certain subsequences, came uh, to our interest. So, um, in the, this the rainbow theory, uh, they, they, we don't need it that all subsequences are allowed, uh, but uh, to study questions related to about. Markov spectrum, we actually need to be able to estimate a uh, house of dimension of uh, some random set, which appears uh, as a result of, of excluding uh, certain sequences, which give us two large Markov numbers. And here's an example. Uh, after all, so if you know that we exclude, for example, uh, subset uh, uh, substring one to one, uh, then the host of dimension, then all Markov values are going to be uh, smaller than 10. And uh, if we compute the host of dimension uh, of uh, this set, it is going to be smaller than 0 0.45. And uh, the result, so that our conclusion is that uh, the value of our function at square root of 10 uh, should be smaller than 0 0.9. So this is uh, the simple uh, etymology. Um, and uh, to get an upper bound on the value of uh, our dimension function. Okay. Yes? Well, uh, this method basically claims that to estimate the uh, you, you don't need all the digits, uh, numbers, but just uh, one, two would be enough? Uh, in this interval, yes. So if you get, uh, if you get, yes, it, it's sufficient. So for, uh, for T, so uh, for T smaller than, uh, Yes, in this interval, you just can, you, it's sufficient to work with one and two. 
Oh, if so the, if the first transition point occurs, that's because the first transition point actually occurs uh, at, at way, way it is. So we don't uh, we don't need to uh, study uh, other digits. So that uh, we need to consider other digits only uh, when we want to study the difference of the spectrum and uh, for larger values of t. So that's uh, uh, for uh, this uh, particular part, uh, we don't need anything than one and two. To study this particular, so to study function in this interval, we, we don't need anything than one and two. Um, Okay, um, very well. Um, uh, so approach to lower bound is uh, rather similar. Uh, so uh, approach to lower bound is that uh, uh, we want to again uh, to fix some number s and uh, construct uh, and say that and find sorry we want to fix some number of uh, uh, finite strings, and we want to compute a uh, maximal Markov value of uh, non of uh, everything that remains after excluding this finite set. And uh, then it turns out that um, the Hausdorff dimension, the set that we obtain, uh, gives us a lower bound on the Hausdorff dimension by this estimate. So if you have, um, <clears throat> uh, if uh, we exclude um, all, uh, that if we take uh, some number s and uh, we exclude all Markov values, uh, which uh, uh, so that s is an upper bound uh, for the uh, for all uh, remaining uh, subset, so, uh, and then we compute the house of dimension uh, of the remaining counter set. Then it turns out that the dimension in the interval from uh, square root of five. To S uh, is uh, bounded from below by the double of Hausdorff dimension of the uh, limit set uh, of the set that we obtain. So the summary of here is that uh, you can use uh, the same set F, but it will give you uh, an upper bound somewhere, and it will give you a lower bound, but somewhere else. So uh, from uh, the same set, uh, so the same counter set F, uh, its house of dimension gives you an upper bound at a certain point, and it gives you a lower bound at another point, uh, which is uh, bigger than the first one. Um, uh, and uh, here is a simple application again by uh, now by Peron, uh, which says that if you have uh, all digits, um, if for Markov spectrum uh, for all sequences of one and twos, so the Markov values of for all sequences of one and twos is smaller, smaller than square root of twelve, and therefore uh, if we can just take empty set, uh, we will get that uh, the house of dimension of uh, this interval of between m and square root of 12 is actually equals to one. And here's an explanation why we don't want to consider any other sequences in particular. Um, sorry, why, why don't we need any other digits? I'm sorry. Um, Okay, and uh, finally, uh, combining these two estimates, uh, one can obtain actually uh, estimate, uh, sorry, combining these two results, uh, combining upper bound and the lower bound uh, by constructing this set of sequences, of forbidden sequences, and estimating the Hausdorff dimension, uh, we can get uh, low, uh, lower and upper bound uh, of, on the value of this dimension function almost everywhere, uh, well, whenever you like. And uh, this is uh, how the graph is obtained. Uh, shall I stop now or do I have another five minutes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can find some.
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, so this is approach is dated by Bombay, is dated due to Bombay. And uh, so let us just try uh, to go over it again. Uh, oh, maybe. <clears throat> So if I pick up a value of uh, 3.333, and uh, this is my uh, function, uh, this is my uh, this is marker value of uh, in sequence. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to construct a tree, which I call bombi tree, uh, for which will uh, let me to decide uh, which sequences to pick up and which sequences to withdraw. Uh, so what I do here, I start in the very bottom, I start with the digit uh, two, and then I can add uh, two numbers to it, uh, to the left and to the right, I, my sequence is uh, of one and two, so I can add either one or, I, or two. And uh, simple computation uh, tells me that I should not even try uh, to start with one, so here's dot denotes zero position between because uh, the value if my sequence has one at the zero position, then this lambda function is going to be between square root of three and square root of twelve minus one, uh, and it is smaller than t. So these sequences are not relevant to me. Uh, therefore, I start with the sequences which have two in the zero place. And uh, this is good. So then if you take two at the zero place, then you are somewhere between square root of three plus one and square root of 12. Uh, so with the, we add extra digit on the right, and we com can compute the value of the lambda function uh, again. Uh, and it turns out to be between square root of three plus one and two over two plus square root of three, which is still smaller than t. Uh, so how is it, how this computation is done? Well, as um, I pointed out uh, some time ago, that uh, uh, the, the set E2 uh, has the smallest value uh, of continued fractions of one and twos, it has the smallest value of uh, square root of three minus one and uh, square root of three plus one. So if I want to get uh, a lower, an upper bound, I just stick the largest number I can get from sequences of one and twos uh, on one side. And if I want to get a lower bound, I just stick uh, the smallest possible continuation uh, on the left and on the right, and this gives me a lower bound. So basically what we're doing here is that we're taking this sequence of uh, two and two, this is just two, two digits are fixed, and then we continue it uh, to obtain uh, the, small, the largest possible value. This will be by adding a, a tail of alternating one and twos uh, on one side, and uh, also another tail of alternating one and twos on the other side, and uh, then uh, we just uh, evaluate this function at the numbers we obtain. So this gives us uh, lower and upper bound uh, for the function lambda or for every node. And we continue building our trees. So uh, we want uh, our function to be bigger than t, uh, so we are going to withdraw all sequences, which gives us all continuations, which are smaller than the number we have chosen. And we are going to continue uh, the, sequ the sequences, which give us, uh, of which says that the boundary interval contains our number T. And this is exactly what a computer is doing uh, for uh, about a thousand values of uh, this value t in the interval from three to uh, the first threshold. And uh, so we continue uh, building our uh, sequences, adding numbers uh, on the left or on the right, uh, uh, as in doesn't matter uh, because everything is uh, symmetric. And eventually uh, we hit our first uh, uh, selected uh, sequence, which is sequence of uh, one, two, one, two, 
21212. Uh, it is here, and it is the first number which gives us all continuations which are going to be bigger than T. So this is our first element of um, the excluded of the set of the sequences that we want to remove. And then we continue building this uh, tree, and apparently uh, there are some other numbers which are also going to be removed because all continuations of them computed this way are going to be uh, give us a uh, market value uh, bigger than T. And um, for example, this uh, DAP, uh, for example, of sequences uh, like this, so this will just gives us uh, the set of um, this uh, forbidden sequences, and we simply need uh, to estimate the house of dimension of uh, uh, the uh, this um, Gauss counter set, um, and it turns out that it's actually that the method we have uh, given before it is efficient enough. Uh, to deal uh, with uh, sets like that in even more complicated. So uh, in particular, for example, to get even uh, the first threshold, then the estimates included, uh, so the sets of forbidden strings that we had to consider was up to the length uh, 24, and uh, which makes the things considerably uh, more uh, challenging. Uh, so I don't have uh, time uh, maybe to describe uh, the bad part now. So I think I'm going to stop, but I'm just saying that uh, all ended well, and uh, we were very uh, we were able uh, to compute the first of dimension of the Markov spectrum, and uh, I was very happy with this. Yeah. Just could you please come back to the picture of the tree? Yeah. Oh. Does it take to understand better? Uh, you explain so when you go on the left from two, you get two point one. Why okay. don't you uh, consider two two point one? Why don't you add two on the left? Uh, you could add two at two at the left, but uh, you if you do the computation, it will just. Uh, uh, it will give you the values which are smaller than T. I see. Okay. So, um, it will give you any new words. Okay. Yes, yes, it will not give you, it will not give you anything. Else. In this computation, how long sequences do you actually? Uh, so, uh, for the computation of the function, I consider sequences up to the length 15. 15? Yes. For computation of uh, this transition point, we had to sequence it up to the length 24. So, um, oh, somewhere in the end, this was this was sort of uh, main problem here is that uh, the matrix that you get. Uh, after after doing or uh, after implementing all this method, is that it uh, is just too big. So it takes um, so if you take even n x seventeen, if you do it in a sort of straightforward way, then uh, you get a matrix of the size uh, two to the two gigabytes of zeros and ones, and uh, when you try to do the actual numbers, it will take you approximately that size just to store it. Uh, so uh, this is why I said at first uh, when I received this email that it is going to be impossible. Uh, but uh, fortunately for us, um, the uh, space where eigenvector lies is turns out to be uh, quite small. So uh, instead of uh, the matrix of several millions, it turns out that the eigenfunction lies in the two, in 429 dimensional subspace. So the approach of uh, so the idea of uh, replacing uh, eigen uh, computation of the eigenvalue with computation of the eigenvector uh, here had particular advantage uh, 
uh, that the eigenvector lies in uh, uh, so eigenvector can be in subsequent is in, in in considerably smaller subspace than the entire system. So uh, the maximal eigenvector uh, it turns out to be only 429 dimensional, while the entire matrix would have, the, have would have dimension about four millions. So this uh, uh, saved uh, us uh, quite a lot. Well, actually, it's sa it's it saves it's it saves the problem. Uh, yes. So can you prove that by choosing appropriate subsets F, you can obtain uh, uh, upper and lower bounds across? Uh, yes, we did that. Yes, yes. Uh, by choosing longer and longer uh, sequences, or it just gives you fine and fine, it gives you better and better approximation to the dimension. So uh, this is how computation of the first transition point is done. So you take uh, better longer and longer sequences, and it gives you close and closer approximation to where this uh, T1 value should be. Thanks for doing that again. 